I'm Bob Harris of Decorative Concrete Institute. Welcome to Duraman's training and educational series for industrial and decorative concrete flooring systems. We're getting ready to install our Endura E21 high performance resin chip system. E21 is a 100% solid self-priming uh, epoxy. We started off by profiling our, con our concrete surface. We're trying to obtain a profile of between three and five, which is uh, achieved by using dustless grinding methods or shot blasting. We then primed with EO2, and now uh, we came back the next day, and it's now roughly 15 hours later, and we're ready to go on to our next system. Remember, at this phase, if we had seen a lot of outgassing bubbles or pinholing, we would have uh, wanted to throw a, a sanding screen on the bottom of a buffing machine with a 100 grit, and then we would go over this uh, surface with a 100 grit sanding screen. We would vacuum up the, the residual dust, and then we would uh, solvent wipe it, but we're good to go. We're within a window of 24 hours. We don't have uh, excessive outgassing bubbles, so we're going to move right on to the installation of the E21. When we talk about E21 and compare it to other like products, there are certainly more economical systems, uh, but there's a big difference between a professional grade system and um, a less expensive system out there. Number one, on some of these um, less expensive systems that are used for garage coatings, they're really not doing a thorough job of profiling the existing concrete substrate. Typically, it includes a little um, mild acid wash, like a citric acid, and they, you know, the, the homeowner or the consumer will put that down, thinking that's enough, and then they'll roll these uh, less expensive materials down, only to find out when they uh, park their car on it, and the car moves, it's, it's gonna, uh, you'll have hot tire pickup. So there's a huge difference between the professional grade system. With this system, like we just talked about, surface prep is important. In essence, we're uh, putting as many as four coats of, uh, by the time you consider the prime, the body coat, and the, and the top coats, you know, you're, you're at three or four coats. So you really have to be aggressive in your profiling methods. Also, comparing this against some of the, uh, the, the less expensive products, is uh, these are definitely considered industrial grade resins. So when you look at the thickness of a side profile of the other products compared to our system here, uh, it's just a huge difference in the overall mill thickness. Because of that, with the, the high performance clear coats that we're gonna put over the top of this system to lock in our color chips, it definitely, definitely resists uh, any hot tire pickup, which is huge in the industry. So our mix ratio, uh, on the E21 is four to one. And so we've uh, pre-measured our four parts A to one part B. And I just wanna bring uh, something up to your, uh, something to your attention here. If you notice on the side of the bucket right here, this is where when we were pouring the uh, A side, which is the light gray E21, some of the uh, material kind of ran down the bucket. So you really need to be very careful about this and what we'll do is we'll wipe it off because when we mix our B side into the A side, if we don't thoroughly mix that, of course, the first thing that could pour onto the surface would be this unmixed material. So oftentimes what I'll see epoxy, professional epoxy uh, installers do is they'll go ahead and mix the B into the A, mix it for the three minutes, dump it into a, a, a third clean bucket and give that a quick spin so you don't have the fear of this happening. So just, just really watch for things like that. I'm gonna get this uh, out of our way here. Hand that over to Brian. And uh, we're gonna get busy on mixing our E21 high performance color chip system. All right.
We're getting ready to apply our light gray E21. Uh, remember, it's just good practice to delint your roller. So you can uh, do this by simply just holding a piece of tape. And despite the fact that the packaging on the roller cover says uh, lint free, you can see all of the lint that we're getting on our tape. So it's just good practice and a good routine to get into this habit. So normally this system uh, is recommended that we put it down at between 10 and 15 mils thick. One way to ensure that you're in fact getting that build is by using a notch squeegee. So this is what we're referring to as a notch squeegee. And uh, you can buy these squeegees with the little notches with varying thicknesses of the mill thickness. So obviously, if we're trying to put our coating down or our system down at a specific mill thickness, like 15 mils, for example, you would buy an, a 15 mil um, notch squeegee. So we're just going to demonstrate real quick and how the notch squeegee works. And basically, once you get it all notch squeegee down, you're going to come back and just do a, a back roll with our 3 8 roller. So I'm going to push it over here to the sides. And you can see that uh, puts it down at a very uniform thickness. And we know that we are, in fact, getting the desired thickness that we're shooting for. Now, it's a little difficult to do it on such a small sample board. On a, a large application, you can literally mix a whole big kit and you can really move quickly with the notch squeegee. OK? All right, we're going to get rid of that. And I uh, wanted to just show you. And then we're going to back roll everything. And then we're going to go ahead and apply our color chips. And the color that we're using is smoke. All right, Brian, you can take that. So when we use the term back roll, this is what I'm referring to. Again, this is 100% solids, so it will level out and flatten out really nice. All right, we've just uh, applied our body coat of our E21 100% solids uh, self-priming epoxy. Now it's time to broadcast our smoke paint chips. Now, there's different variations on how many uh, or how much you broadcast onto the surface. Basically, you can uh, apply a light broadcast, a medium broadcast, or a heavy broadcast. So I think for demonstration purposes, what we're going to do here is what we refer to as a a heavy broadcast on this panel, and we'll do a light to medium broadcast where you see uh, more of the, uh, the light gray color. So when you're broadcasting, so normally I'd be throwing it, I'd loosen it up, and I'd be throwing it way up in the air like this, OK? I'm going to try to avoid getting too much over there. So you want to broadcast a heavy chip to refusal. So you have to force yourself to really throw a lot of the chips on there. Okay. Also, in the cool conditions, if you're applying your epoxy in the winter months, um, I've actually been out on jobs on a garage in one instance where I thought I was broadcasting to refusal. And then as I looked back about 25 feet, I could see a slick, shiny spot. 
which means that I didn't get enough. So when you're going with a heavy broadcast like we're demonstrating here, you really have to force yourself to throw enough of the chips to avoid having that bleed through. So if it does bleed through, what we had to do in that instance is uh, we um, applied some, after we cleaned the floor, we applied some polyaspartic sealer and we broadcast some chips right into the uh, slick spots. So there are remedies, but just the, the point I'm making is really force yourself to, to throw a lot of the chips down on your heavy broadcast. So what we'll do is uh, pick us up some more chips here and show you on the light to medium, okay? Um, you need to be, have a little bit more finesse when you're, when you're doing this, something like that. That's about all it takes. I like myself, I like the, the light to medium broadcast um, because I like to see more of the background color of the light gray epoxy. I just think that's a very nice look. So it's really a matter of personal preference. So once you have the desired amount of chips and you're satisfied with that, this will need to dry for a minimum of eight hours or till the next day. And then what we like to do is put a buffing machine with about a 120 grit screen on the bottom of the buffing machine and we like to screen the surface and the reason for that is sometimes what happens is the chips when you broadcast them in like that the chip can actually turn sideways and it makes it rigid so by screening the surface it makes them uh, lay completely flat and then from there what we'll do is we'll sweep and vacuum everything up and then we're ready for our top coats the top coats can consist of uh, a couple different combinations. If you're going for a uniform appearance, we can do what's called a grout coat, okay? The grout coat, which is pretty much you're leveling it into the surface because uh, with these systems, there's undulations because of all the chips. Like a 100% uh, broadcast to refusal like this, um, it's going to require a grout coat. And there's a couple ways that you can do that. You can uh, grout coat it with the E10, 100% solids epoxy once you've uh, screened it and cleaned it. And uh, you would apply E10 as a grout coat, but you don't want to leave that as your final wear surface. What you would ultimately do after you've uh, applied the grout coat with E10, you would come back over the top of that with P72, which is the rapid setting polyaspartic sealer. Um, and the reason for that is, is the polyaspartics are very uh, resistant to abrasion, abrasion and scuffing and scratching. In addition, with this system, uh, now we have excellent, excellent hot tire resistance. Another possible option would be to go ahead and just apply uh, P90, which is the 90% solids polyaspartic. So you have a couple of options. Regardless, though, you should uh, top coat it with either the P72 or the P90 for the uh, hot tire resistance and also the abrasion resistance. All right, there you have it. Broadcast to refusal, medium broadcast. Uh, tomorrow, once this is dry, we'll go ahead and show you how to prepare the surfaces and then we'll finish them off with a clear coat.